Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> We're going to be doing the call to worship, but the, the words are printed in your bulletin, and we ask you to join us as we sing. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. If you have your bulletin, you'll see our announcements on there. Nothing too new this week. Although today, our very own Jim Larson will be delivering our sermon. So I'm excited to hear what he has for us today. <laughs> so you get to stand here and you have a peanut gallery, no matter what you do. <laughs> well, as we start our services, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to come together and to gather together as a family to worship you and to praise you. Lord, we ask you bless this service. Bless the people here, bless the people remotely, and bless those in need. Watch over us as we go throughout this service to hear your word, to incorporate it in our, to our lives and our lives to your service. And we pray this together in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first hymn is A Higher Ground. Uh, some of you had requested that they actually have music to look at. And if you need that, we do have some copies for you. But the words are also printed in the bulletin. So would you stand to sing this first hymn?
Please be seated. You know, let me stand over here and see if I'm getting left. It's echo. Here. No? Okay. You're just going to deal with the echo. Um, you know, every week I come up here, and every week lately I've said, what a crazy week it's been. <laughs> it's been a crazy week. You know, this week, my family, we put our house on the market, and we had a lot of showings. And as we left our house <clears throat> for a whole day while there were showings, we stopped and we prayed. Do you ever go to the Lord in prayer and you're not quite sure what you're going to say? All the time. Right? Or you want to ask for something, but you feel guilty for asking? Yeah. Well, that's how I felt when I, said, when I prayed with my family that day. And, but I felt, really, I felt the Holy Spirit step in. Because my words probably weren't what I was going to say. And my prayer was to thank God for the blessing our house had been for the last 10 years. Because it had. And then my prayer went into, please let whoever wants our home, for it to be a blessing over them. And this week, that's what I've tried to focus on, is the blessings we have. We have a lot of hardships right now, a lot of tough times we're going through and things we're dealing with. But we're blessed. And we have to stop and acknowledge that. And I want to read some verses from Isaiah chapter 40 to you. But I want to give you a little tip. I spent years interviewing people. You pick up on certain things. If you're having a conversation with someone and the word but comes up, that's when you pay attention. So there's a but in these verses, and that's where I really want you to pay attention, okay? So Isaiah chapter 40, starting in verses 28. Have you never heard, have you never understood, the Lord is the everlasting God? The creator of all earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall and exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. No one is denying things are rough right now. It's different for all of us, and we're facing our own challenges. But the Lord will give us strength. Count your blessings this week. That's my encouragement to you. Stop and acknowledge what's good in your life. No matter how much bad there is, God is good. So let us pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessings you give us. And thank you for the opportunities we have to acknowledge those blessings, to share them with other people, and to encourage others to see their blessings. That despite the troubles we face, you will see us through it. Lord, we pray for the strength to get through these hardships, through this season, so that when we're on the other side of it, we see the blessings you gave to us. The greatest blessing we received is your son coming and living and dying for us to forgive us of our sins, to make a pathway to heaven. We pray to follow in his footsteps as much as we can and to be an example for others. And like he taught us, we will pray together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. Um, Bruce saw an opportunity a couple of weeks ago to get a weekend off, so he asked me to uh, share the message this week. So on top of the troubles that I'm going to talk about and Gene referenced, y'all got another one. You have to listen to me for the next 20 minutes. And Drew, you're here. You said you weren't going to be here today. <laughs> she heard me at breakfast that I was going to be speaking and said, well, I'm out of here. So, <laughs> um, But any... Anyhow, the, the, it, it's remarkably coincidental. The message that Gene um, shared and the scripture he referenced from Isaiah ties so nicely into the message I want to share with you all today. I have many, many blessings in my life, and um, I'm particularly blessed that here at Central I found a Bible study group and that they were willing to let me join them. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is and was to me um, to start participating and continue participating in this weekly study of the Bible. And it's with a group of really intelligent people and they're fervent believers in the Word of God. Now what is noteworthy about all of them is that they know the Bible so well. It can help me as I sometimes struggle trying to understand what God is trying to teach me with His Holy Word. You see, this is my Bible. And Wikipedia, and we all know that's just a wonderful source of information, <coughs> sarcasm. Um, Wikipedia states that a Bible is a collection of religious texts or scriptures generally considered to be a product of divine inspiration and a record of the relationship between God and humans. Well, I want to go on record and say there is no doubt our Bible is a product of divine inspiration. It's not a question. But the Bible is so much more to me than how Wikipedia describes it. To me, the Bible is a book of promises. It is at times a biography, at other times an autobiography. It's an anthology. It is a textbook, and it's a history book. And if our lives are a test, then this is the book that we go to to get the answers. The Bible is something that I go to now when I am struggling with some of the big questions that I think all of us have from time to time. And certainly this year, we all have lots and lots of questions. This has been a year of troubles and challenges for many people, some people even here at Central. So far this year alone, we have experienced extreme social unrest, constant political jibber-jabber, continuing conflict in the Middle East, epic wildfires out west, hurricanes, and of course, COVID-19. The current challenges of COVID-19 have affected our businesses, our families, our very well-being further complicated by the concerns by many parents to figure out what is right and safe for their children during this pandemic. COVID-19 alone is causing impacts and changes that some of us have never before experienced and ne never anticipated. You know, here in the U.S., we've had 5.85 million reported cases and greater than 180,000 deaths. But in addition to the human health toll, COVID restrictions have caused enormous unemployment, business closures, even shortages in the grocery stores. People have lost their jobs, they're going hungry, and many may lose their homes. Our education system, as we well know, has been turned on its ear. Rites of passage, such as proms and commitments, have been canceled or severely curtailed. And while that may seem trivial in comparison to all the other things that are going on in our lives today, I remember being a young person, and those were milestone events. And I pity that, that the students of 2012 didn't, or 2020 didn't have the benefits of, that I did in 74. So 2020 has just been a memorable year. And sadly, it's only three quarters of the way done. But I fervently pray that when 2021 rolls around that it's a better year for everyone. 
So now, we've gone through all this stuff in 2020. And if you're like me, you've asked the question, why? Why is all of this coming down on our heads? What have I or what have we done to warrant all this impact and change? Is God mad at us? Is God mad at me? Even as blessed and fortunate as I and my family have been all throughout this year, I've still wondered at why this perfect storm of change has come down upon us. Now, I'm not normally a whiny person. Well, Penny might disagree, but I really am not normally a whiny person. Typically, I just suck it up and I go on about my business. But I found my question of why sounding remarkably whiny. So uh, I thought about it a lot, and I've prayed a lot about it a lot, and I had an epiphany. You know, why am I asking why? Instead of asking why, maybe what I really needed to be doing is asking what can I do about it? How can I bring back as much normalcy as possible in our lives, in my family, and those around me, during this time of change that we're in right now. I've spoken about it before, and I, I'm going to say it again today. God has a plan. It is a divine plan, and I trust in that plan. But God only reveals what his plan is at the time and in a means and to an audience of his choosing. So I'm now content with not worrying about why. That's not my problem. God has why in his plan. He knows what he is doing. I don't need to know why. I'm going to leave that to him. What I am going to focus on, and I encourage all of you to do the same, is what are we going to do about it to bring as much normalcy as we can to our lives? Where are we going to look to find comfort, peace, and contentment in these changing times? And that brings us to the title of today's message, A Constant in a Time of Change. Who has always been there for us? Who, through divine inspiration, caused the greatest reference book ever to be written? Simple answer, y'all, it's God. God is our constant. He is that immovable object that can resist the irresistible force. And he put all our answers in this Bible. But, and this is a big but, I don't always understand what God is trying to tell me in the Bible. It, the words sometimes are murky to me, or I misunderstand the intentions of the words. I acknowledge I'm not particularly bright, but I'm also not a dunce. Nonetheless, there are times I struggle with understanding God's word. And now we're coming back to my earlier reference to the Bible study group. There is nothing more comforting than to be able to ask a question or ask fellow members to explain something that I just don't get. I'm particularly blessed that two in our group are pastors, and the balance of our group know the Bible so intimately well that they could bring me along. I'm positive but beyond any reasonable doubt that the explanations and understandings they share with me are the best and all that I, I could hope for when they clarify my misunderstandings. And that brings me to today's reference. Um, we're studying the Book of Lamentations. Uh, it, well, we're about to move out of it, but uh, today's verse um, struck me. And... Um, I want us to read it today, and I'd like you all to stand. We're going to reference Lamentations 3, verses 31 through 33. I've taken these words from my Bible, the NIV Life Application Bible. For men are not cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love for he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to the children of men. Thanks be for God's word. And uh, you all may be seated. So 
So what Jeremiah conveyed to me in these passages is a message of hope. That no matter how your bad your circumstances seem, God still loves us. Even if and when some of the experiences or what we are experiencing is by God's own hand and plan. There is still hope. Now I'm not meaning to compare what we're going through today in our lives to what Jeremiah and all of the nation of Israel suffered when Jerusalem fell. But the, Je- the message from Jeremiah is what resonates, and it resonates today, and it is very relevant. Those that know me well know that in the past I have avoided the Old Testament at, at all costs, at any cost. It just not, was not the book for me at that time. But I, I'm, I'm telling you today that I'm changing. As our Bible study is spending more time in the Old Testament, More and more of it is now becoming very relevant to me, and I can see parallels between the stories of the Old Testament and what we are living in our modern lives in 2020. In the last few weeks, our study group has started to study the major prophets. And as I mentioned last week, um, we uh, were discussing our readings and lamentations, and that verse that we that we reviewed uh, stuck with me in in that message of hope embedded in all that misery that Jeremiah was describing just stood out like a big bright light it kind of sounds like today and uh, oddly it was that same evening that Bruce said uh, can you cover for me this particular Sunday and I immediately knew what the message would be about you know times of strife but there is hope So today, as we are facing unprecedented change, adversity, and perhaps hardships in our lives, where do we look for messages of hope? I'd suggest the Bible. The verses from Lamentations I've shared are only one of many, many verses throughout the Bible that give us a message that we can take peace and comfort even if you don't know why you're in these hardships. Why is not important. Let's gain another perspective on what we are facing today. Let's compare our current experiences to some of the situations that are described of biblical individuals and entire nations. While what we are experiencing today is tough and for some life-altering, Keep in mind that those that went before us suffered hardships way beyond our first world modern hardships of today. It is not an easy or a quick read, but I challenge all of you this afternoon, take an hour after you get done with brunch and read Lamentations. It's a story of tragedy, violence, grief, and most importantly, hope and perseverance. Tragedy, violence, and grief. Have you seen any of that on the news recently? Um, Don't get depressed by the news. When you hear tragedy, violence, and grief, spend an equal amount of time as you did on the news reading your Bible and find passages of hope and perseverance. They are there. Let the Bible soothe your soul. I believe it can only help. So what are we going to do in these changing times? What how are we going to find our constant? And my obvious answer, God and his holy Bible. But what else can we do? Where else can we find answers to what's going on today and how we deal with it and live our lives as best as we can? And I'm going to suggest that if y'all look around you right now, you and all around you are actively doing it this very moment. We are worshiping our God. We are praying for his presence and for his guidance in our lives. We are seeking fellowship with fellow believers so that we can draw upon each other's strengths. Um, Please, after our service today, turn to your neighbor who you're sitting next to and with sincerity ask them if they're all right. Do they need any help? Is everything going okay? Neighbors, don't be embarrassed to admit you need help or to ask for help or to ask for comfort. We as a body of believers 
are accountable to each other for our health, our welfare, our well-being, and as a source of spiritual support. Read that Bible, folks. All those things are in there. Those are teachings that we've been given. So let's ask it again. What do we have going for us during these trying times? We've got God. We've got his holy word in the Bible. And we've got our strengths and resources as a body of believers banded together in a community under God. But I'll repeat my earlier question. What else can we do? Where else can we find answers to what we are going to do about these changing times so that we can get through it? And I'm going to propose or suggest that you seek a deeper understanding of God's Word by not just reading the Bible, but really studying the Bible. Don't just memorize passages or recite famous verses. Dig into what those words mean. Debate the message that God is giving you. So that when you examine it, you examine it from every perspective. So his true meaning can be revealed and become um, memorable and resonate with you. Now how to do that? I strongly recommend you join or form a small group. You can do that even in these days and times. Small groups afford you the opportunity to socially distance and stay safe. If you seek or look to form a small group, it is particularly good if you surround yourself with people who know the Bible as well or even better than you do. They can only help you. It is so enlightening to enter a discussion about God or something that he has written in his Bible and have your your understanding of that passage challenged. And then during the ensuing discussion, you have one of those aha moments and the lights come on and you totally get it. But what you needed was somebody to discuss it with. We all know that Jesus preached to the masses many times. And on all those numerous occasions, his message was powerful and um, resonated with the crowds. But you will find as many and perhaps more references in the Bible where Jesus was preaching and teaching to one person or to a very small group of people. Church service and being surrounded by a hundred plus or more worshipers is always a fulfilling and a treasured experience for me. But I'm finding more and more that my spiritual growth is occurring most frequently in a small group setting as I study the Bible. We in our study group And uh, Tim's liable to throw something at me, but we in our study group, I think, are a life application of what the Bible is teaching us. We are doing the best job we can to translate biblical teachings into our real-life lessons that we are living. So let me summarize. What can we do in these changing and trying times? First, I avoid you to, I encourage you to avoid the quicksand of the question why. There may be no answer to why that any of us can find and put our finger on. What I would say is when you get to heaven and you have your audience with God, ask them. That would be the perfect time. So many of our questions are going to be answered then. But I want to focus on today. What can we do? I believe we turn to our constant, our God, and rely on him by worshiping and praying to him, by reading the Bible, by studying the Bible and discussing it with fellow believers, by practicing in life what you learn from the Bible and your fellow believers. And I want to close with another lesson from Scripture that I find very calming. This is one of my favorite biblical passages, and uh, it's from Philippians 4, um, verses 4 through 9, and I'd ask you to rise, and I'll let this be my closing prayer um, in today's sermon. So Philippians 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. choir is coming up please note that your bulletin has the words to our last one our god is an awesome god when we get to the end do you see the little one-liner we'll sing that one twice so just be prepared for that okay all righty thank you Thank you, everybody, for coming to service. We hope and pray you have a wonderful week.